friends. Papa Dale here. This morning, uh, Bandit and I are going to go goat hunting. <laughs> no, not with guns. Uh, it's been reported that there have been wild mountain goats around on the uh, mountainsides here at uh, Lone Tree BLM Campground. And so uh, this over here is the area just to the south of uh, Lone Tree Peak that uh, they've been sighted reportedly. And so we're going to go and see if we can find any signs, any scat or any footprints. Uh, doubtful that we'll actually find any actual live mountain goats, but hey, who knows? <laughs> if we do, we're going to try to get some video of it. <laughs> so let's go. One of the things that uh, the BLM workers do is when they anticipate rain, monsoon storms, they see uh, a culvert developing, they'll try to redirect the flow of water or they'll try to minimize the flow of water, the power of the water, by placing straw uh, at or near the site where the water will come down. Well, one of the things that that does is it draws the mountain goats in because they like to eat that straw. <laughs> uh, and in fact, that is exactly what I've heard has uh, happened here. Uh, so let's go see if we can find some signs. So we're going down into this wash and uh, we'll follow the wash along its path for a little ways. Perhaps we can find some hoof prints down here in the sand. Interesting rock formations here where the power of the water has washed out the softer rock and left the, the harder rock. I don't know if in the uh, heat of the summer this might be a, uh, a habitat for rattlesnakes. Well, this little drop off here reminds me a bit of uh, Sarah's crack when Bandit and I hiked it and when I had to go back and hike it alone. This is a, uh, a drop off from a hard outcropping of rock and it has, the water has, uh, has washed away the softer rock beneath and left this uh, in escarpment here, tiny escarpment. Some beautiful plants down here in this wash. Of course, uh, you don't want to get up too close and personal with them or you get the business end of some of those thorns. <laughs> it's beautiful. Well, there is a track that is a possible goat track. It's got a cloven hoof, got kind of pointed toes on the left of it. And uh, I don't know, I'm, I'm not a game tracker, so I don't know. I'm not even a hunter uh, much, although I have hunted some in my youth. But uh, certainly not now, and I'm certainly not very knowledgeable. But having said all of that, that looks like it's a possible track from a goat that was up on the little step that I'm on and then stepped down like this. Ooh. Well, here's, a, here's another little escarpment where 
During heavy monsoons, the water comes tumbling down and creates a waterfall. Come. Hey. Come. Back. Come in. Well, let's, uh, let's go on up on that next ridge up above and look around a little bit. All right, well, we're up on the ridge now. Let's see what we can see up here. A little bit flatter right here for a ways until it gets to that part of the mountain. Well, let's walk around here, see if we can find any goat track or scat. This is uh, what they call a jumping choya cactus. Uh, it gets the name jumping because uh, when it dries out, it's pretty green right now because it's the rainy season, but when it dries out, uh, it becomes quite brittle and easily broken off and those thorns are kind of hooked thorns or have little tiny little tiny hooks on them you really can't see them or maybe they just haven't developed yet for this season but just brushing them just barely brushing them you don't even realize you've brushed them just barely brushing them a whole section just falls off and just clings to your clothes or if it's an animal to their fur and then uh, it can uh, redeposit its seeds in another place it's almost like it's jumped on you hence the name jumping choya well can you see all of that all in bandits paws those jumping choya spines get on the ground and some other kinds too and they end up penetrating his pads and causing some problems so I have to stop and clean it out every once in a while. Even in monsoon season Arizona is a beautiful place. See that Indian head over there looking skyward? <laughs> I can't not see it anymore. Here I am up above the campground at Lone Tree BLM. A lot of people here this time of year, but there's still a lot of room to camp. A lot of elbow room. So down there is the wash that Bandit and I came up. Pretty interesting walk. May have uh, may have seen a goat track. I don't know. I don't know if I'm losing my focus or. My eyes just aren't focusing well. And here's Papa, up another mountain <laughs> in Arizona. Woo! Yabba dabba doo! Freeze. Freeze. Freeze, Bandit. Freeze. Come.
Breeze. Freeze, freeze. Come. That's a good boy. That's a good boy. You did a good job, didn't you? Yeah, I did, Papa. I, I'm a mountain dog, Papa. Didn't you know that? I, I'm a I'm a mountain dog. I could just climb this old mountain all day here, Papa. You don't have to worry about me. Really? Wow. I didn't know that about you. Yeah, Papa. I, I can just climb these rocks all over, and if I found me a wild goat, I would bite him. You would? Oh, my God. Goodness. Well, okay. Thanks for being my mountain dog and, and being such a good boy. Yeah, well, I'm always a good boy, Papa. Don't you know that? Yeah, I do. I know that. You are always a good boy. <laughs> well, this is the mountain that we just came down from. It's uh, not as high as Lone Tree Peak, but it was plenty steep. And uh, it was uh, as much of a challenge as this old man wanted today. <laughs> well, some friends that I met here camping said that there's a uh, monument of some kind just down the hillside from the Millennium Falcon. So I'm going to go down here and take a look. You can, uh, you can see them down there maybe. The friends anyway. <laughs> maybe you can see them down there. Here I go. <laughs> See this little tarantula right here? See if I can get him to move. Uh -huh. There he came up. There he came alive. Here we are, folks, uh, just down the hill from the Millennium Falcon. This is Warren and Kim. Say hi, YouTube. Hi, YouTube. Hey, YouTube. <laughs> oh. And, and over here we have Wynn and Chrissy, and they are, uh, they are the lovebirds. They are uh, almost ready to get married, so she still has time to dump him and run off with me. <laughs> But that probably isn't going to happen. <laughs> and we are out here examining this uh, monument of some kind. It, uh, it's some kind of, uh, of screened-in rectangular uh, screen. Uh, and, and it has some kind of, it's a box, okay, good. And uh, it has some kind of writing on the top of it. Let's go see what it says. Yeah. Well, here's the base, and here is the foundation, and get my shadow out of the way, and as we come up, this says, and God said, you have a purpose, love and forgive. Oh, isn't that a nice message? Well, the only thing I can add to that is... Yabba dabba doo! <laughs> well, here I am, just below Lone Tree Peak. And when I was up on the other mountain, I thought I saw a, a cave right out here in this area. So, I haven't found it yet, but I'm trying. I think this is what I saw from up there on that peak. Well, that's not a peak, up there on that mountain. I think, uh, I think the shadows may, and the distance may have made it look more like a cave than it really is. Just an outcropping of rocks with an indentation there. So, time to go back. The Millennium Falcon, bandit's missing me. And he wants some lunch, and so do I. And then I want a nap. <laughs> Yabba-dabba-doo! <laughs>
folks. Bandit and I are finished with our uh, mountain climbing trip and we're finished with our goat hunting trip and uh, we're back to the Millennium Falcon. Gonna have some dinner and settle down for a nice quiet evening of editing. So I'm glad you were able to come along with us and the only thing I gotta say now is what's next? <laughs>